Oh, somebody's coming in. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pat Nauer, business coach at Corner Office University. This morning, I'm not in my usual space. Today, I am, I mistimed everything. So I'm in an office, in a friend's office, and you're going to hear doorbells going off, and you're going to have conversations in the background. In some sense, it's just the way life is, right? But I'm so glad that you're here today. And my co host is Barbara. Hey, hi, everybody. This is Barbara Ellison, your personality pro, because personality does drive reality. So we are so excited to have Mark here. We had a great pre-conversation. So Mark, welcome. Hey, uh, yeah. thanks for having me. It's great to be with you and, and your audience. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you here, Mark. And for those of you who don't know Mark, Mark is the owner and founder of People and Pets Energetics. He's an intuitive healer and coach that helps pets and pet parents with their health and well-being. So they uh, so they both have happier and healthier. Uh, they're both happier and healthier naturally. He uses non-invasive energy medicine modalities and tools to help his clients experience change in a gentle and safe fashion. At times, they experience change immediately and in other instances over time. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to talk about that a little bit, Mark. And Mark is, the, is certified in the emotion code, the body code, and the advanced ASH work. He has talked about and demonstrated his work at the San Antonio Microsoft Store and at events such as the Body, Mind, Spirit Expo, the San Antonio Holistic uh, Festival, and numerous holistic fairs in Greater Chicago and in the Midwest. He's also been a guest on online radio shows, podcasts, and local Chicago TV, in which he discusses his work as an intuitive energy healer and does many readings with live callers. Now, that'd be fun to see you do it with animals. <laughs> in May 2019, he launched the People and Pets Show, a weekly online radio show where he interviews leading figures in energy medicine, energy healers for people, um, animals and places. Day by day, people are choosing to assume a greater role in their own health and well-being and their pets have and well-being let's not forget that and mark works with uh with to help people experience more health happiness joy and freedom in their everyday lives mike mark it is so nice to have you here i am so excited you're here looking forward to the conversation Thanks yeah so. yeah so um yeah so let's talk about about energy i mean we all know that energy drives everything right in the center of every single molecule in the center of every atom is energy so if you can affect one piece of energy you can affect a larger piece of energy like the entire being so tell us about that with pets how do pets experience energy yeah so uh as you said everything is energy and obviously pets are too actually Pets are probably more naturally in tune with the energetic world than even people. Okay. So, um, okay. you know, we were talking a little bit before the show, those that have dogs or cats, your, your pet often knows when you're about to come, come home. Okay. They, they know the time they start waiting by the door. So they're very connected to you, the world and other dimensions. So as you said, everything is energy. Uh, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It just changes form. So, uh, like I said, pets are very in tune with their immediate environment, those in the household, and sometimes they can get out of balance when they take on those energies in the household or going on in the world. It was really interesting. I was um, talking to somebody one day and she was talking about her dog and how she had, um, she got this puppy and brought it home and she didn't know what the dog did all day. Sometimes, you know, she'd come home with the husband like, a, you know, torn up and everything. Yeah. And she ended up putting a baby cam in mm -hmm. her house. And what she found was that the dog would go and sit by the door and wait for her. And when she wouldn't come, the dog would go tear up something and run back to the door waiting for her to come home. And the poor dog was there all day long waiting for her to come home. Okay. We really, really tied to her. Is this really common for pets that they are so um, committed to their owners and to their um, to their pet parents that they um, that they really are so attached that they just miss them so badly? Yeah, it's fairly common, especially um, you know right now with everything going on in the world. A lot of people have actually been even home more often. You know, a lot of people that are fortunate enough to be able to have the be able to work from home have done so, and also so the pets have even gotten used to spending more time with having the humans around. 
Uh, it sounds like what you're describing is probably what the veterinarians and other in the animal behavior world would describe as separation anxiety. So that can happen for a variety of reasons. There's no one reason. Perhaps in some cases, uh, this was a rescue pet that still has some trauma right. going on from being separated from its original uh, owner, pet parent. For others, uh, it can be that they're taking on the energies of the household. So maybe some of the humans are have that anxiety, anxiousness. The pets will often take on those things to help out their humans and in the process, get out of whack. Oh, that's so interesting. I, have, they take I, on have, to admit, humans. I have to admit my dog mm -hmm. does that once in a while. And one day I was doing this big project and I had inadvertently left out and you know, the, you always hear kids saying, well, the dog ate my homework. Yes. My dog literally ate my homework. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. But she, I had, I had left and was gone, I think longer than what I had planned on doing. Mm -hmm. And my family that all, that we all live together, they can say that, that you know, Daisy will hide. And if I'm going to be gone like overnight, they have to go and literally find her to put her out because she'll oh, wow. hide from them. But yeah. as soon as I'm, as soon as I come home, she's out and playing and she's doing all good. So this day, she literally ate my homework. Yep, that happens. You oh, know, wow. everything's possible. I, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Mark, it was, I was like, oh, you're kidding. So, Mark, every animal has personalities, just like people, right? Absolutely. And they come into this world, maybe from other dimensions or other lives, or, you know, maybe they're brand new or whatever. We don't know. But when they come in, do they come with, with their personality formed or do they come with their, per do they develop the personality from birth? Sort of like humans, but, you know, we all come in with something. Yeah, I, I think uh, each uh, pet person comes in with like a soul blueprint. Okay, that they're meant to experience certain have certain experiences during a, a specific lifetime. Now that soul blueprint can get altered by traumatic events, like in the case of a pet, if it was you know abandoned went through trauma and abuse, that can affect the trajectory of the soul blueprint. Or you know it's true, like uh, animals, they uh, since they are so connected to other energies in this world and other dimensions, they can take those on, which can alter the trajectory of their soul blueprint. And I guess by extension, their personality, how they show up in the world. Are, an are animals more intuitive than people? Uh, great question. So generally speaking, yes, because I think animals are still overall, they're more connected to their instinctual survival and they're just more connected. You know, a lot of humans, because we think here in the West, or at least definitely in the US, you know, there are a lot of kids today that are very sensitive, very connected, just know things, very highly intuitive. And still there's a tendency, at least in the US for sure, that when, you know, uh, four-year-old Johnny knows that Aunt Susie has tummy problems and just sh shouts it out, Aunt Susie will say, how'd you know I have digestive tummy issues? You know, no way you could have known. Kids just know, but they're often kind of reprimanded for knowing things that no one knows how they know it. So I think humans overall are taught, at least definitely here in the U.S. and many parts of the world, Western world, to shut it down, that it's considered weird or how do you have this inner knowing versus right. pets? They don't have those stories. They just know things. Is one type of pet more intuitive than another type of pet? Hmm. Or one in an animal. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a pet. It could be a bird. It could yeah. be a, what, a, a snake. It could be whatever. A shark. I, I've never really thought about that. Uh, the, I, at least the way I work, I know from you know the animal behaviors will probably there's probably some rating chart of which animals are even more connected to energies. And what I always find, it's always going to be what's what's going on with that specific pet. So energy medicine is one thing that can tell you like on a scale, you can ask, would you connect with the pet, have their permission to work with them energetically. And I can ask through, by connecting with God, source, creator, archangels, and light teams that uh, how intuitive on a 10 point scale is this pet? 
10 is ultimate intuitive, zero is none. And it's going to vary from animal to animal, but most are going to be fairly intuitive. Interesting that it varies from animal to animal. I guess sort of like it varies from human to human. Yeah. You know, there could be a general like consensus, probably the animal behaviors, the vets will say about a certain species, or as we know, you know, there's a whole school of thought about certain breeds of dogs have certain temperaments, like a Bichon Frise is probably really good around kids and other types, you know, are recommended less so. And there's going to always be variation. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. What, what are the biggest behavioral problems that you come across that people contact you for? Yeah, the top quote unquote behavior issue is the peeing and pooping in the house. They have a dog or cat, you know, they love the cat. And then, you know, usually it's fine. Then all of a sudden go a month where it's starting to pee in the room or on the bed and they're not sure what's going on. When cases like that, I always say, you know, my first question to them, if they come with that issue, is have you taken your pet to the vet? Because I always tell people, you know, my work, the energy work I do is something you do to the, in addition to the excellent veterinary pet care, you're already providing your animal. So, you know, take your pet to the vet, rule out any rapidly moving infection, kidneys, anything that could account for that. 98% of the time, there's nothing there, but you know, we always err on the safer side. Um, so that's probably the most common. And number two is separation anxiety. Again, as we said it earlier in the show, it's for a variety of reasons and the sources are going to vary from pet to pet. And then the third thing is like, especially with a lot of people working at home, uh, dogs that I call it excessive barking, you know, certain breeds are going to bark a little bit more than others, but some dogs never stop barking. One was barking for seven years and I got a call about that. And uh, we worked with it, got to the mystery of that one. That one's a little, did a little extra Sherlock Holmes on that one, but we got to the root and it stopped. Wow. Seven years. Oh my God. I can't imagine a dog barking for seven years. Holy Moses. <laughs> that would get old. My, girl really, really my girlfriend had a little, my girlfriend had a little Yorkie. Mm -hmm. That dog barked all the, unless she was physically holding it in her arms, that dog barked. Yeah. And I, it was like, okay, yeah, fine. We're not going over there. It was like, you just, yeah. I don't know this, if they ever did find out, just always barked. This one story I have in mind, it was actually a Morky. So, it, you know, seven years, the pet parent had done all sorts of things, tried to get at the heart of the issue and still barking. And uh, the long story on that was, you know, the pet had its own life issues. It also had taken on energy of the, of the household. And I did a 30 minute session. The dog, you know, animals are very sensitive. I was doing it through Zoom. So animal felt things and it felt good, but you know, some changes would show up in pretty short order. Next morning, got an email from this client saying, nope, exactly the same. I said, interesting. Okay, that's what you're observing. Hmm. So I consulted with some colleagues. The key to unraveling that mystery was this Morky was doing healing work Proxing, doing healing work on behalf of her ex-husband. Okay, had parted seven years earlier, but was the Morky was doing healing work, so she was still on friendly terms with her ex-husband. We contacted him in order for the dog to get better. I had to do healing work on him too. Okay, cleared that stuff. Was able to break the contract, healing contract. The barking stopped. So you never know. How the heck did you figure that out? <laughs> well, it was actually, like I said, it was, you know, looking what comes back, you know, like I said, the, the session felt very solid and, you know, the results weren't showing up in the physical plan. So interesting. So I, I consulted some other colleagues. I said, you know, I, that was the first time that had happened to me. And some colleagues said, check that, check to see if the dog's doing healing work on behalf of another human or pet. And when I asked the question, the energy body to focus on that, that's what pulled it up. And she, she, she it was interesting. The pet parent mentioned, because, you know, some of this seemed to have stemmed from when I got a divorce from my ex-husband, you know, just kind of threw it out there. Mm -hmm. But it showed up later, kind of like in a, a second round. So that's how, you know, that mystery was resolved. 
I've heard that people that um, animals take on the personalities of their of their pet parents. Um, and hi, Kurt. Thank you for joining us. Um, I yeah, I've heard they take on the personalities of their pet parents, and that um, if you have like if it's a couple and they have two animals, one will replicate one one pet parent and one will replicate the other. Is that true? It's going to, again, be different from everyone, but it's very common. There's often even a lot of instances where, excuse me, uh, the pets take on the physical illnesses of oh. the pet parent. Mm -hmm. They can take on the energies because sometimes, like I said, they see it as their mission. Some animals think they have a contract to do healing of the human and often will take on the same thing. I remember I was at a holistic fair when they were still in existence in Wisconsin a couple of years ago. And this woman came to me, a woman in her thirties that said, my pet, this digestive, all sorts of thing had been to the vet, did a session for the pet and 95% of the issues that were showing up on the pet were the source was, was the pet parent. Okay. She had all sorts of digestive issues. She had all sorts of uh, emotional baggage she hadn't dealt with. So I said, really, for your pet to get better, you, you should consider, if you're open to it, doing some healing work from yourself. She started crying because she knew what it was about. So often the, the pets uh, are kind of barometers or, of what are, are going on in the lives of the humans. And like I said earlier, often they the pets let me know before I can get better as a pet, my pet parent needs some healing. Is it ever possible to heal the pet first and then that helps to heal the pet parent? Uh, yes. And so, hmm. so usually if that shows up, I call that like an absorbed energy. So like I said, animals can take on the energies of, a, of the humans. Okay. So often I just get intuitive information as I'm doing the consultation that, you know, the pet parents typically there. So I, I said, you know, would it be okay? I'm going to do some cleanup of your field. So often in a pet session, uh, I'm often toggling back and forth between doing some healing on the pet and the pet parent right there. So, you know, it's pretty common that 30% of a session will be doing many healings on the human for a pet. Do you ever do healing on humans? Do you ever work on the human? Um, and on the pet? I mean, uh, like in two different sessions or is it always integrated? Great question. So typically the way it shows up. So if the entry point, I'm asked to do healing work on behalf of a, a pet, the human will often be a part. I've never had a session, a human session, where I have to do healing for the pet, for the human to get better. Okay. So as I like to say, um, uh, you know, uh, hu humans are very good about giving their energetic baggage to the pets. I've yet to see a case where a pet has given its energetic baggage to a human. Wow. So, I mean, animals are in our lives to be healers, essentially. That's one of their major functions. I think one of their roles is to provide unconditional love. So we yeah. all know those that have pets, you know, most of them provide unconditional love to their pet parents. That's, I think, one of their core missions is to light up. You know, we all had animals in our lives that sometimes we had a kind of rough day at the office or just in our world. We come home and right. the cat knows and we'll just come sit by you and purr away, right? Or your dog, you know, you haven't told them right. anything explicitly, but they know. They know just kind of be there to provide you right. support. So interesting. I mean, animals are real. One real of the, good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things for me that, and just that this has just triggered my, my next older sister, she has Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and her, and in the fall, her neighbor passed away and uh, had a cat and nobody would take the cat. Yeah. So Diane just, Diane started feeding this cat. Well, now this, cat has kind of migrated into she has now has a house she has a bed this mm -hmm. dog but this cat i should say but now one of the my other my other sister and i we were taught we were all talking and we said gee diane is really much more with it mm -hmm. you know because normally she would forget and since it, so now they have two cats 
her mm -hmm. it's like it has made her able to concentrate because we always had we always had cats has a has kids and her but her husband has always been a dog person so they never had a cat well now these two cats have kind of migrated into the house and even ron has said that diane is calmer she seems mm -hmm. to have more she seems to just be more with it more focused and we are like more maybe that maybe that's it that she's able to focus a little bit and we're like hey good who knew but that just what you just said it's yeah, just like the, I, those pets and they migrated to it they just migrated to her from the neighbor yeah and i want to add that any pet animal that comes in your life you have a soul contract with them okay it's meant to be if an animal shows up yeah. there's a reason they show up in people's lives again you know it's possible uh, i'm sorry what was your diane what was her name again the, that you just mentioned. My the, sister Diane. My okay, sister yeah. Diane. Diane. yeah. Yeah. You know, in addition to everything else going on in the world, it gave her an extra, you know, reason. She needed to, you know, feed the cat and take care of the cat. Kind of, you know, a, a new mini life purpose, you know, focal right. point of her day that, you know, perhaps, you know, got her, you know, to be more present, able to be more present. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we just we noticed it, and it's like, and every time it's like, gee, Diane's really with it. And so we, the rest of us, noticed it, and it was like, oh, yeah, and it was right. since since she since she got the cats. Excellent. So Excellent. we're yeah. very happy. We're very happy. So. Yeah. Oh no, that's fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. So I've yeah. heard that animals yeah. choose their humans. That an that humans don't really choose the animals. Is that true? Could you repeat your question? What did you? Yeah, I've heard that animals choose their humans. The humans don't really choose their animals. Um, at least my understanding is it's a mutual agreement. Okay, they both there's a two way soul agreement to have a connection. Okay, maybe it's for an extended period of time. Sometimes those contracts are meant to be for a shorter duration, and the animal moves on, or you know. We've all heard of the lost pet. When a pet gets lost, it's not accidental most of the time. If you know everything's there and then all of a sudden they take off, most likely their sole contract is is done with that that individual. Oh, that's fascinating. That's really fascinating. I know. Doesn't make you think, Barb, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Could and then and you and then you hear the, the the movies that they've made of these incredible journeys that yeah. pets have gone through. To get back to get back to their and oh, how yeah. would that how would that pet know? Yeah, no, like I said, you know, then and that somehow they got yeah. lost, or you know, maybe especially like during hurricanes yeah. or natural disasters where there's some disorientation. Right. Yeah, if they're meant to be back, they'll find a way back miraculously. Yes. Amazing. So yeah. typically when you work with somebody or when you work with it with the owner and the pet, what is a session typically like? Yeah, so we'll go ahead and assume the entry point is for a pet. Let's just say it's the peeing and pooping. So in a session, they'll give me a little bit of information, like how long is this peeing and pooping going on, you know, or they do it in a certain room, a few details. I'll ask them then to rate the severity, you know, 10 is very severe issue of peeing and pooping, zero is none. If they're seeing me, it's usually eight or higher, probably 10 or higher. So with that information, the way it works uh, so it's a session for a pet. Uh, the first thing I do is I get the pet's energetic permission to work with them. Okay. I always work by permission, be it for a pet, uh, a human, or even a place. Cause I also do space clearings. So, uh, over 10 years, I have a 99.8% track record of getting a yes. Occasionally over like two cases over 10 years, the pet said no. So game over, but most of the time I get it. I connect uh, with their field, see that they're energetically testable, spines aligned, properly hydrated. I get help from above, God, source, creator. I work with archangels. I work with light beings. With that information, I'm allowed to see the energy field, usually quite a bit. So, so then the way it works, I just ask the energy body, reason for, the, for this peeing and pooping with this animal. The body will tell me. The two most common big bucket reasons animals have their stuff, like I said, is um, emotional stuff, 
could belong to the pet itself or they take it on the uh, emotional stuff from the humans. Anger, grief, resentment, love unreceived. The body mm -hmm. will tell them okay. that will clear it through intention. I'm connected. Just release one, two, three, gone. As I'm doing the work, sometimes you'll see the pet move around. Other times not. I know it's gone. The second most common reason pets have their stuff, very common, is toxicity. What are you feeding your pet? If you're feeding it a, a major store brand generic dog food, those usually have a lot of chemicals and additives that over time adversely impact the health and well-being of your pet. Uh, I also see uh, toxicity from medications, vaccinations. If that's a factor in the animal's issue, I can clear it. So I keep on clearing things, ask the body reason, clear, keep on going till the body will either say we're completely done with the issue or done for today because the body of a, a pet or a person will release whatever they're ready for at any given one 30 minute session. So at the end, I'll just say, okay, with a pet, if it's the peeing and pooping, you're probably not going to see something, you know, no pooping on the spot, but I'll just say, look at your pet, look at its demeanor, same or different. The pet parents are very in tune with their pet. They'll say, oh, just looks a little bit calmer or he was kind of tense and now he's, you know, asleep, whatever. And then I'll tell them to notice the changes over the upcoming days and weeks and just give me some feedback and, and see where we're at. And typically, how many sessions do you have with a, with, uh, for an animal? I know yeah. it'll depend very, very, it'll vary based on the animal, but. Yeah. So rule, rules of thumb, if overall an animal's in you know, good shape, there's this mysterious change in behavior of last month, typically one or two 30 minute sessions. Now, if it's a rescue pet that most likely went through a history of trauma and abuse, those changes will show up over a period of time. Very interesting, very interesting. What's the toughest case you've ever had? Hmm, great question. Um, I really think the one I, I talked about earlier with the Morky, the mysterious Morky, the barking dog for seven years, uh, that was that, you know, that one threw me for a loop temporarily till I consulted with the colleagues. Um, I've had other cases too, where, uh, usually if something, you know, they've been to the vet and worked with a dachshund in Australia that had surgery was paralyzed. As I told people, you know, I wish I could say I have the magic wand and I can just, you know, wave it and the, the dog will start walking again. Uh, that's, those are usually when they've shown up in the physical plane, that will take a period of time. And sometimes people want, you know, the magical fix in one or two sessions. And those are, you know, going to take more time. Are there any um, cases that really stand out for you that, I mean, other than the, than, the, than the Yorkie, is there anything else that really has stood out as being one where you just, it was kind of like a head scratcher, like, um, you know, what's going on with this animal and why is this happening? And, um, you know, in the end, it turned out to be either something simple or something just really interesting. Yeah. Um, I think another interesting case or, like I said, when people come to me, uh, I had this uh, Leo the cat, the pet parent brought me Leo. His issue was he had been to the vet. The vet detected an intestinal blockage. Surgery was going to be $2,600. Can you help? I said, well, you know, I can't, I can never guarantee an outcome about anything. That's just, you know, uh, but I say, you know, if you're not going to do the surgery, said I don't have the $2,600. The cat wasn't eating or drinking water. So if you're just willing to play and let's see what's possible, let's let's see what's possible. So I worked with Leo, one 30 minute session, cleared out a lot of toxicity, vaccination, medications, radiation, all sorts of stuff and some energies from the household, 30 minutes. At the end, I remember I always tracked the energy. I said, you know, for today's session, it felt like there was about a 40% a change. So, you know, I don't know what that means and, you know, but just give me some feedback in the upcoming days because he wasn't doing well. So I got an email four days later saying, you know, first couple days after the session, Leo wasn't still not looking well, not eating, not drinking. Then day three kicked in, 
He started eating, drink again, and it's been fine since then. So, you know, again, I'm very clear. The work comes from above, God's source creator, the archangels and the light team. I'm a conduit. I facilitate the healing, but it's not actually me, you know, doing the healing in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm very humble. I know this has been a gift given to me to help people, right. help pets, help places. And uh, just allow what's meant to show up to show up. Have you ever been unable to treat an animal or a unable person? To, uh, to unable to what? To treat an animal or a person? Unable. Let's see. Yeah. I think usually, like I said, usually the tougher case, like I think of a, a client that came to me about four years ago, fibromyalgia for, you know, 30 years, again, medically diagnosed, not me. Right. Uh, we work with that issue. Usually if it's at that level for that extended period of time, it's that, like I said, we did a couple, two 30 minute sessions and she didn't feel she was making enough progress. So I think, again, usually those are the quote unquote tougher cases when it's reached that plane, uh, you know, extended chronic, you know, right. there's a lot going on with all those situations. And I think sometimes we live so much in, you know, Instagram, Instapot, where people got accustomed to wanting things pretty quickly in today's world, that something right. will probably take time, especially if it's physicalized more than others. Again, I've seen other cases. Uh, I've never du directly worked with clients that have, you know, medically diagnosed cancer. And I have uh, colleagues that have worked with people with diagnosed, you know, and showing up. They've worked with them and the tumor mysteriously vanishes. So. Well, since everything yeah. is energy, you know, what causes what causes an illness can right. certainly remove this, right? Absolutely. So everything's possible. And that's how I go on just with the blank right. slate. I just follow, as I tell my clients, I'm going to follow the energy trail. It's very possible will not make logical left brain sense. I know just to clear these things and let's just, do the work, do the clearings, download and activate frequencies you need and let the changes show up as they're meant to show up. Absolutely. Well, this is great. Mark, what are you most um, excited about right now? Yeah, uh, I'm really excited about uh, about my, my work with pets. You know, when I first started my pet healings back in 2012, you know, I first thought that, you know, I'd be working one session for person, one session for a pet. But as my work has evolved, I'm really excited that, you know, we're seeing the complexities of the, the pet world. Like I said, I'm all for the low hanging fruit. So if, you know, a, a dog freaks out during thunderstorms, you can put on like a thunder jacket and that solves the issue, stay there. And again, a lot of the people that see me come because they're really scratching their heads. It, you know, it defies all the 95% of the low hanging fruit solutions. I'm always excited about those. And it's it's been very interesting. I'm very exciting to seeing evolve the interplay between the pets and the humans, especially the pets and their connection to the human world, but also to mass consciousness mm -hmm. uh, and also even things dimensionally. I was working with a, a dog, Oliver. He's a rescue dog rescued from a Boarding situation five years ago, he's had some challenges for sure. And the last thing he was just like trembling uncontrollably. Mm. Well, when I did the session, one of the major factors for that uncontrollable trembling was he was tied into mass consciousness. He was aware of what had happened in, in at the Capitol in early January and was upset by it. We cleared that out. The trembling stopped. Wow. So I, I'm I'm really excited, about, especially about my work with pets and how people are seeing how connected they are with their pets, and uh, you know the complexities of the pet world. You know, Barb, we say this over and over and over again. You know, always work with a pro, right? Work with somebody who's got the experience, who's got the knowledge, who can yep. actually get you what you want. And here's another great example of a real professional in his field. So if you have an out there, if you, if you're listening and you have any kind of issues going on with your pets or you're just curious as to why they do what they're doing, contact Mark. 
Mark is a pro. He's not going to waste your time. He's not going to waste your money. He's not going to waste your energy. He's going to help you get to the root of the problem and get this taken care of fast so that you're able to have the life that you really want. And that's what the Everyday Riches show is all about. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we go in and, there and get to the root. Right. And one of the things that I have to admit, I was thinking, it was like so often, you know, people, we have businesses mm -hmm. because we want certain things. How sure. often now is somebody's business being impacted because something is happening with their pet? Because they're worried about their pet. They're spending time and energy and money going to the vet. And here's you with a just such a different approach to that and and to realize that there is such an integration between like you have built a business teaching people how to relate to their pet that's yeah, amazing I'm, there is room in the business world for everybody it's like <laughs> it's like wow you know everybody there's so when people tell me that they can't build a business find something that you love that you that you're good at and build a business around it because there is a market for everything yeah. because we as, all have different different things yes. yeah as we so know I, smart, that is great yeah i just wanted to add you know i haven't made this point yet but as we know you know pets are such an integral part of our family today of people's lives you know lives. for for some generations you know they're like their kids okay and you know that's part of the term pet parents uh, that they're an integral part of the family. And, you know, uh, you know, we've seen the explosion of the pet industry with, you know, pre COVID doggy daycare, you know, pet resorts, everything. Right. People love their pets and, you know, we'll, we'll shower them with love. And they should, and they should. Yeah. And make Mark arrangement and make arrangements for them. Absolutely. For the future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Mark, you have an MP3, don't you, to give away to our to our listeners today? Yeah, I do. So this is a, a, a MP3 called PetCom. So as we've been talking during the show, you know, a lot of animals experience stress, fear, anxiety, nervousness, things along those lines for a variety of reasons. Um, um, you know, as I said, sometimes, you know, it can be their own life issues, especially if they're a rescue pet, or they've taken on the energies of the household. So this MP3 called Pet Calm, it's about, I think, eight to 10 minutes. You play it and it will reduce the stress, nervous anxiety of your pet and separation anxiety. So whenever you're out, you can just Ooh. play it for your pet. Uh, you'll also get some benefits as a human. Um, and um, yeah, so that's my my gift to those that are interested. Uh, you can play cool. your Pet Calm MP3. I I'll do it before, before I leave. Before I leave, Daisy's going to listen. <laughs> All right. Great. Great. And does it work well to put it in an endless loop? So that you can. Uh, yeah, sure. It's what will happen for either people or animals for, for pets. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll absorb. Oh, I wanted to add this. It's I've energetically encoded with frequencies from God's source creator. So there's more peace calm, equanimity, those frequencies. So the pet will take on, absorb only the, the energies they need at that time. So it'll vary from listening to listening. Um, and yeah, just that is what you notice. Absolutely, this is so great. So yeah. I will put that um, that um, MP3 in the show notes. So okay. watch later, it'll be in the comments section of, of you know, whatever, you're, whatever um, format you're listening to. And Mark, it has been such a joy having you here today. Oh my gosh, I learned so much about pets and about yeah. people and about energy and about healing. Yeah. Unbelievable. We'd love yeah. to have you back, I'm sure. Don't you think, Barb? Hey, you know, it's just, we. I loved what Mark said because it's absolutely the truth. Pets are an integral part of our lives. They're family. I mean, people mourn if they lose their pet. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, as much, sometimes it's worse than losing, it's as bad as losing a family member. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, yeah of, absolutely. We'll get ready to wrap deal up. With it? Maybe next time, you know, the whole topic of pet grief too, that's, you know, it's, it's starting to become yeah. more legitimate that, you know, when people lose a pet, they feel it, you know, definitely. And uh, they're popping up they more support for, for people that are grieving the loss of a pet. 
And of course it works the other way around too. When pets lose their, their people. Absolutely. The animals absolutely yeah. grieve and when each other. Yeah. Um, I had two cats when one passed away, the, the one that was remaining took on the other cat's personality. It was the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We'll have absolutely. to talk about that next time on the show. Yeah. We don't know how yeah. to handle it. Yeah. 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 Sounds great. Perfect. Fantastic. Mark, this was great. Well, Thank you. Day, everybody. Thank you so much for listening and watching if you were watching this on Facebook. Um, and Mark, again, thank you so much for being here today. I am Pat Nauer. I'm a business coach um, that, with Corner Office University. I help business owners, of course, not only make a lot of money, but do it in a way where they have a business and a life that they love. And Barbara? And Barbara Olson, your personality pro. Because personality does drive reality because, you know, we have to get, we can't do life on our own. We have to get along with the people around us. So let's do we it effectively. Do. So yes. have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Take Bye, care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.